welcome to his exposure. As I promised you in the previous lesson, in this lesson we'll be talking about white balance. When we are trying to take a picture, our goal is to get colors on the picture as close to the true colors as possible. But in some situations, it doesn't work that way. This is because a different type of lightning gives us a different color temperature. Some light is more warmer, like in this picture the warmer light can give us a yellow color shift. Some light is more cooler and like in this picture it can give us some blue color shift. And our goal is to neutralize these color shifts and make colors look more realistic. Of course the our eyes built that way that we don't see those color shifts in real life. We know when we look at something in reality, for example, at something white, we know that it's white. It doesn't matter under which lightning conditions we will look at it. Unfortunately, I mean, our cameras are not that smart. I mean, they're getting smarter and smarter. And some cameras actually can guess and perform very well on how to white balance in the different lightning conditions. But still there are some situations where we have to give a camera some directions. So how the white balance actually works? Let's take a look at uh, photography color wheel. As you can see we have six different colors on the color wheel. And the rule applies that Opposite colors, like we have yellow and blue, for example, will neutralize each other. So if we have too much yellow, when we add more blue, it will decrease yellow, it will neutralize yellow. Or if we have too much blue on the picture, we will have to add more yellow to neutralize the blue color cast. The same with other colors on the color wheel. Back in the days, or even now, when we use a film camera, the way to neutralize those colors is to use a different type of filters. The different type of filters exist for a different lightning situation, so we would just put the filter on our camera and would take a picture. We also can color balance while we are printing in a dark room and uh, setting some filters in our enlarger. In digital world, it's much more easier. We can set our color balance in our digital camera. Let's take a look how to do that. For different cameras, the white balance switch might be in a different places, but for my camera, the white balance button is right here. It's WB. It's a sign that was letters WP stands for white balance. When we press this button, we look at the screen, and right here you see that the white balance symbol will show up. And when we dial the switch, we can change our white balance settings. Let's go over white balance settings in more details. The first setting we will be talking about is Auto White Balance. It's a sign with letter A in Nikon cameras and with letters A, W, B in Canon. It is usually a default setting for the camera, which guessing the white balance based on the scene evaluation. If you have a multiple light sources, it usually tends to color balance towards the light source which is uh, the brightest or the most intense. In some situations it might work just fine, but there are situations where auto white balance might not work that great. It all depends on the conditions. Also, it depends on your camera. I've noticed that the newer cameras have better auto white balance technology than the older ones. Here is an example. I compare the shots I did with my old D70 camera and my new D7000 camera. Those pictures were taken under the same conditions under the tungsten light and I used auto balance for both of them. 
the figurine's face and the dress supposed to be white. And as you can see, D7000 did a better job than D70. On the picture was D7000, the face and the dress is white, but on the picture was D70, it has a yellowish cast. The next white balance setting would be tungsten or incandescent. The tungsten or incandescent light is just old-fashioned light bulb which you probably could find in your house, in most of your houses. And in general, uh, this setting is usually accurate, the most accurate for the bulb which is 60 watts of power. The next setting would be fluorescent light. Fluorescent lights are those lights which you usually find in commercial buildings, those long white lights, and very often they would give you a green color cast. The next uh, white balance spot would be a daylight mode. Actually, the daylight mode is based on the temperature of light at noon, a non-cloudy day where the sky is blue and the sun is shining. But you have to be careful with that mode because color temperature of the light will change depending on what time of the day you're taking the pictures. Especially when you're taking the pictures in the evening uh, before sunset you will get totally different colors. But that mode might be interesting to use while you're shooting the artificial lights during the night. It might give the colors more pop and more brightness. Next mode would be a flash mode. Of course this mode we would use while we're taking pictures with a flash. And depending on your camera, once a flash is uh, attached to your camera or activated, the white balance should automatically switch to the flash white balance settings. But it's, uh, once again, it depends on your camera. The next mode would be cloudy or overcast mode. Of course, you would use those settings when you're taking the pictures on cloudy day or overcast day. Usually, camera tends to give you a little blue tint while you're shooting in overcast. So, the overcast to cloudy balance will add a little bit of yellow warmth to the photo. The next mode would be a shade mode, which of course you would use in the shade. Uh, in the shade, pictures tends to be also called with a blue cast, so the camera will add some yellow as well. The next camera mode is signed with letter K, which stands for Kelvins. Actually, color temperature is measured in Kelvins. As you can see in this table, depending on your lightning conditions, you have a different number of Kelvins. And as you can see, the bigger the Kelvin number, the cooler the color temperature is. And the smaller the Kelvin number, the warmer the color temperature is. This way, light during heavy overcast is much cooler than the candlelight. If you search online, you can find a lot of different tables which will give you a Kelvin number for a different lightning situation. To measure a color temperature more precisely, the device called color meter can be used. The last mode would be custom white balance mode. In this mode, you can set your white balance custom by using a white or gray card. Let me show you how to do it. To set a custom white balance, you will need the 18% gray card like this, which you can buy from a camera store. Or, if you don't have a gray card, you can also try to do this just with a simple white piece of paper. So, for this, you will have to set your gray card or your white piece of paper next to your subject. In this case, this flowers would be my subject. And I set my gray card right here. 
To set the custom white balance, you will have to press on the white balance and scroll all the way to the pre, right here. Then you keep on holding the white balance button till the pre here starts to blink. When it starts to blink, it's time to take a picture of the gray card. You will have to switch your camera to manual focus because uh, it's hard, it will be hard for the camera to focus just on the great service. So while your prey is blinking, you zoom in your camera so you fill up the frame with a gray card and you take a picture. If you see good, it means you're good to go. Your custom balance is set. Now you're ready to take a picture of your subject with custom white balance.